Oxford English for Careers, Oil and Gas One, Students Book, by Lewis Lansford and Darcy Valance, published and copyright Oxford University Press, 2011. Unit One, It's My Job. Hi, my name is Khalid. I am from the UAE. That's the United Arab Emirates. I am a technician with an oil company here. I like my job because every day is different. Today, I am in a team of five technicians at a new plant. One man is inside in the control room, and I am outside with the other three men. One man is from the U.S., and two are from India. We are from different countries, but we all speak English. We use radios to speak to the men in the control room. Most people in the company are Emirati, but there are many other nationalities too: American, British, Canadian, Egyptian, Indian, and many more. I like meeting foreign people and practicing my English. Unit one, pronunciation. One. A. H, J, K, two, B, C, D, E, G, P, T, V, three, F. L, M, N, S, X, Z, four, I, Y, five, O, six, R. Seven. U. Q. W. Unit One. Listening. Conversation One. Excuse me. Yes. Where is the store? Uh, I'm not sure. I think it's over there in Building Two. Okay. Thanks. Conversation two. Excuse me. Hi. Where is the store? It's over there, room one o three. Thanks. Conversation three. Can I help you? Yeah. I need sixteen of these bolts. Sorry, sixteen of these bolts. Do you know the part number? P V three seven six four. Could you say that again, please? P V three seven six four. Is that P V or B V? P V. Three seven six four. Okay, I need your employee number. That's O seven two five. O seven two five. Okay. Conversation four. There aren't any here, but I can get some from the main store. Can you call me in half an hour? Sure. What's the number? Seven eight four five two two. Seven eight four five five two. No, five two two. Seven eight four five two two. Okay, I'll call you later. Right. Unit One, speaking. What's in the box? 
There are some bolts. How many? Twenty. Good. What's the part number? PD seven nine zero. What's that number again? PD seven nine zero. The list says PD seven nine eight. They're the wrong bolts. Unit one, writing. Hi there, welcome to Fire and Safety. I'm your new manager. My name's Don Bradman. Now, um, you need to fill in this form. You have a pen? Right. Your name first. That's first name, and family name. Okay. Employee number. Ah, your employee number. Your employee number is two one seven eight. Two one seven eight. Okay. Um, manager, that's me, Don Bradman. That's Don D O N Bradman B R A D M A N. Okay. Good. Just fill in the rest and sign your name at the bottom. Unit two. It's my job. Who do you work for, Steve? I work for a Canadian oil company. What's your job? I'm a well test operator. And where do you work? I work in lots of different places all over Canada. Lots of different places. Yeah, the company has oil wells all over the country. We go to an oil well for a few days or maybe a few weeks. Then we move on to a different well. Who is we? Do you work in a team? Yeah, a well testing crew has three people: a supervisor, an operator, and an assistant operator. At first, I was an assistant operator. Now I'm an operator. I see. What do you do on a typical day? Well, usually we do tests on new wells. First, we prepare the test equipment. Some of it's heavy equipment, so it's hard work. Then we do tests, a lot of different tests, and record data on a computer. How many hours do you work? Do you mean hours per day? Yes. Uh, we work twelve hours a day. Twelve hours. When do you start and finish? We start at seven a.m. and finish at seven p.m. <laughs> it's a long day, but it's okay. I like the job. Why do you like the job? I like working outside, and I like seeing different places. So it's a great job for me. One last question. What skills do you need for this job? Well, it's hard work, so you need to be fit,、uh, and you need to be good with numbers, <laughs> and you need to be careful. I mean, careful about safety, and careful reading numbers and recording them. Unit two, listening. There are some very big numbers in the oil and gas industry. The world uses about 85 million barrels of oil per day. A barrel is 159 liters, so that's more than 13 billion liters a day. 13 billion liters a day is about 560 million liters per hour. So oil companies need to produce a lot of oil, and they need to produce it fast. There are about forty thousand oil and gas fields in the world. Most of them are small fields, but some are very big. The biggest is the Gawar field in Saudi Arabia. This very big field is two hundred and eighty kilometers long. And thirty kilometers wide, the Saudi National Oil Company, Saudi Aramco, operates the field, 
and produces about five million barrels of oil a day. That's a lot of oil. Five million barrels is seven hundred and ninety thousand cubic meters. Seven hundred and ninety thousand cubic meters every day. Kahwar also produces about fifty-seven million cubic meters of natural gas per day. Unit three, listening, conversation one. Hello, technical support. Hi, it's Omar in the control room here. Is that George? No, George is giving a talk right now. This is Mike speaking. Can I help? Well, we're having trouble with one of the control panels. What's the problem? The gauges aren't working properly. Is the warning light flashing? Yes, it is. Okay, I'll come and look at it. Conversation two. Hello, technical support. Bill speaking. Can I speak to the shift supervisor, please? Uh, he's talking on the other phone. Can I take a message? Oh yes, thank you. Your name and department, please. My name is Faisal Hamdi. I'm phoning from Human Resources. Faisal Hamdi from HR. Okay, and the message? Please ask him to call me. Um, it's about the new technicians. Can he call me today, if possible? Okay. So the message is: Please call about the new technicians today, if possible. Yes, that's right. And your number? My number is two two three three. Okay. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Unit three, pronunciation, exercise one. One. Europe. Two. Qatar. Three. Business. Four. Because. Five. Iran. Six. Prefer. Seven. Company. Eight. Industry. Nine. Africa. Ten. Example. Eleven. Producer. Twelve. Important. Thirteen. UAE. Fourteen. CO two. Fifteen. Middle East. Sixteen. Petrochemical. Seventeen. Environment. Eighteen. Refinery. Exercise three. One. Countries. Two. Prices. Three. People. Four. Before. Five. Produce. Six. Reasons. Seven. Percent. Eight. Expensive. Nine. Arabia. Ten. Employment. Eleven. Increasing. Twelve. Separate. Thirteen. Chemicals. Fourteen. Ethylene. Unit three. Number talk. One. 
Hey, what's fifty-four divided by nine? Fifty-four divided by nine. That's six, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Two. Okay. Let's add up these numbers. Thirty-one plus fourteen plus twenty-four point five. Thirty-one plus fourteen plus twenty-four point five equals sixty-nine point five. Three. Three hundred and eighty minus forty-five point three. Uh huh. What does that come to? Three hundred and eighty. Subtract forty-five point three. I make that three hundred and thirty-four point seven. Three hundred and thirty-four point seven. I make it that too. Four. What's fifteen percent of three thousand? Huh? Uh, three thousand times fifteen percent. Is that four hundred and fifty? Ah, three thousand times fifteen percent equals four hundred and fifty. That's right. Five. What's the square root of eighty-one? The square root of eighty-one. You know that.、Oh, come on. What is it? <laughs> Nine. Oh yes, of course. Unit four. It's my job. Hi, my name's Danny. That's me in the picture near the top of the rig. I often work in high places. It looks dangerous, doesn't it? Well, maybe you can't see my safety harness. I always wear a safety harness, so I can't fall very far. Still, a lot of people can't go up high, but. I love it. How about you? Would you like my job? I'm a rigger, by the way. What do riggers do? Well, riggers lift things and move things, heavy loads like big pipes and big machines. First, we estimate the weight and the size of the load. Then we decide how we can move it. Sometimes we erect special lifting equipment. And、sometimes we work with crane operators. When riggers work with crane operators, we prepare the load. I mean, we put the load in the sling, and then the crane lifts it. There are a lot of riggers in the oil and gas industry. We're everywhere. Why? Because there's always heavy equipment that needs lifting and moving. I work for a good company. Safety is important to them. Every day, the supervisor talks about safety. There are lots of hazards in my job, so safety is important to me too. Unit four, number talk. What's the length? What's the width? What's the height? What's the depth? What's the weight? What's the speed? How long is it? How wide is it? How high is it? How deep is it? How heavy is it? How fast is it? Unit four, listening. <laughs> okay, listen, everybody. Today's toolbox talk is about working with cranes. You know, cranes can be dangerous. So, tell me, what hazards are there? The load can fall on you. Right. So, what's the safety rule? Don't stand under the load. Right. Never stand under a load. And wear a hard hat at all times. Another hazard: loads can swing left and right. Yeah, 
So what do you do? Do you put your hand on it, try to stop it swinging? No, you mustn't do that. It's very dangerous. You must never try to stop a swinging load. Good. What else can go wrong? You can lose your fingers. That's right. Be careful where you put your hands. You don't want your fingers going up with the load. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, can I ask a question? Sure, go ahead. What can I do in an emergency? I mean, how can I tell the operator to stop lifting? Good question. The crane operator can't hear you, so how can you stop him? One answer is hand signals. You know the emergency stop signal, both arms out left and right. The other answer is radio. One man must always have radio contact with the crane operator. Okay. Any other questions? Mm. No? Right. Let's go. Unit 5. It's my job. I work in a seismic crew. I place the geophones. That's my job. We place the geophones before the other crews arrive, the vibrator crews and the recording crew. Then they arrive and they do their work, and then we remove the geophones. We must put the geophones in the right place. That's very important. So, we all have a GPS unit. That's a handheld electronic gadget, like the sat-nav in your car. The GPS tells you your exact position. We read the data carefully to get the position right. The other crews start work when the geophones are ready. The operator in the recording truck talks to the vibrator crews by radio. He tells them to start the vibrators and he records the seismic data. After that, we pick up the geophones and then we move to a new location. This job can be hard work. You're walking a lot and carrying heavy things in hot weather sometimes and in difficult places like mountains and deserts. So you must be fit. I like the job. I like it for two reasons. I love being outside and seeing different places and I like working in a team and the money is good too. That's three reasons, isn't it? Exercise 3 This job can be hard work. You're walking a lot and carrying heavy things in hot weather sometimes and in difficult places like mountains and deserts. So you must be fit. I like the job. I like it for two reasons. I love being outside and seeing different places and I like working in a team and the money is good too. That's three reasons, isn't it? Unit 5. Pronunciation. Exercise 1. Example. We must put the geophones in the right place. 1. That's very important. 2. So we all have a GPS unit. 3. The GPS tells you your exact position. 4. We read the data carefully to get the position right. Exercise 5. 1. This job can be hard work. 2. You're walking a lot and carrying heavy things. 3. So you must be fit. 4. I like the job. 5. I like it for two reasons. 
Six. I love being outside and seeing different places. Seven. And I like working in a team. Eight. And the money's good too. Nine. That's three reasons, isn't it? Unit five, listening. Everyone in a seismic crew uses a GPS receiver. GPS stands for Global Positioning System. You use it to find your exact position on the Earth. You can find your position even in the desert or on the sea, and we use it to navigate. Navigate means find your way to other positions. Other positions are called waypoints. Okay, now listen. This is how to navigate. Before your trip, you enter and save the coordinates of all the waypoints. Waypoints means the places you want to go to. Okay, I'll show you how to do that later. Okay. You're ready to start your trip. The first thing is to find your position. So, turn on your GPS to find your position. Now, the GPS needs radio signals from three satellites. So wait until it receives signals from three satellites. This usually takes a few seconds or maybe a minute. When it receives the signals, it shows the coordinates of your position. Now it's ready to navigate. So, select the first waypoint. Waypoint zero zero one, for example. Then select Go to, and you'll see a pointer on the screen. That's your bearing. Follow the pointer to the waypoint. Okay, right. Now, let's try it. Unit six, kickoff. Drilling mud is a mixture of water, clay, and other materials. The mud pump pumps mud from the mud tank into the top of the drill string. The mud flows down inside the drill string to the bit. It cleans and cools the bit. Then it flows up the hole and carries rock cuttings up with it. The mud and cuttings go to the mud screen. The mud screen separates the cuttings from the mud. The mud flows through to the mud tank below. Unit six, listening. Problem one. Hey, we have a problem. What is it? The cuttings aren't coming up. They aren't coming up to the surface. Yeah, the mud's not bringing them up. It's too thin. Is the mud mixer working? Yes, it is. Okay, let's make the mud thicker. Should I add clay? Yeah, add two hundred and fifty kilos of clay. Right, two hundred and fifty kilos. Problem two. Listen, that mud pump is very noisy. There's something wrong with it. Yeah, you're right. It shouldn't be like that. It's working too hard. Why is it doing that? I guess it's because the mud's too thick. Too thick? Yeah, it's too thick, so the pump has to work really hard. Should we make it thinner? Yes, just a bit. Add two thousand liters of water. Okay. Add it slowly, not too fast. Okay. Problem three. Look, that drilling floor isn't safe. Why is that? There's mud on the floor. I mean, a lot of mud. Somebody might slip. Okay. Let's make it safer. Hey, Dan! 
Clean the drill floor right now. Should I use water? Yeah, use water and clean all the mud off. Okay, I'm on it. Unit six, pronunciation. One. Roughneck. Two. Dirty. Three. Senior. Four. Older. Five. Crew. Six. Operate. Seven. Control. Eight. Heavier. Unit seven. It's my job. There's a big oil and gas industry in Brazil. We also produce a lot of ethanol. So I'm always busy. Most metal pipes and fittings are welded. This means that pipe fitters and welders work closely together. The pipe fitters read plans for pipe systems, cut and prepare pipes, lay them out, and put all the parts together. They also drill holes for instruments, flow meters, for example, and they assemble flanges, elbows, and T's. Then. I do my work. I weld together sections of pipe. After I weld the pipes, the pipe fitters assemble them. They use bolts to join the flanged joints. Then inspectors inspect and test the pipes. Finally, workers paint and sometimes insulate the pipes. Welders. Always have to be careful of electric shock, burns to the skin and eyes, and smoke. Where possible, we work in the workshop, but a lot of work is out on site. Sometimes I have to work high up, or in confined places, for example, inside a pipe. So safety is really important. Unit seven. Listening. There are six main hazards for welders. Can you name them? Electric shock. Right. So, what do we do? Weld dry. Don't stand in water. And wear leather shoes and always wear gloves. Right. We also check our equipment often. We don't use damaged equipment. We switch off equipment when we aren't using it. Another hazard: gas cylinders. Gas cylinders can explode. Correct. So, how do we stay safe? Don't drop them. Right. How? Always secure the cylinders, and always move them safely. Okay. And the three steps before moving: close the valve, remove the regulator. And replace the valve cap. Then, use a cart to move the cylinder. Right. And always close the valve when you go on break or at the end of the day. Also, you should always wear your safety glasses when you're working. Okay, that's two hazards. What else? Arc rays. They burn eyes and skin. Precautions. Cover skin and eyes. Never look at the spark. Always use a welder's helmet and gloves. Right. Those things also protect us from arc sparks. Hot sparks can burn clothes and start fires. So wear your protective clothes. Cotton trousers are good, and no pockets. Pockets catch sparks. Another hazard: smoke. Smoke from welding can be dangerous. So we use respirators, and we always know the material we're welding. That's right. And indoors, 
We always use the ventilation system. Okay, there's one more hazard on my list. Trips and falls. You work in confined spaces, sometimes underground, sometimes high up. So, what do you do? Always think about where you are. Wear a safety harness. Keep the work area clean and tidy. Right. Unit seven, number talk, exercise three. One. Three point one four, times point zero two two, times point zero two two times twelve point four equals point zero one eight eight cubic meters. Two. Three point one four times point five five times point five five times five hundred sixty five equals five hundred thirty six point six six five three cubic meters. Three. Three point one four times one point two. Times one point two times twenty two thousand three hundred equals one hundred thousand eight hundred thirty two cubic meters. Four. Three point one four times one point eight times one point eight times six hundred forty thousand equals six million five hundred eleven thousand one hundred four cubic meters. Exercise five, student A, one. Three point one four, times point five, times point five, times twelve, equals nine point four two cubic meters. Two. Three point one four, times two, times two. Times twenty-four equals three hundred and one point four four cubic meters. Three. Three point one four times point seven five times point seven five times three equals five point two nine eight seven cubic meters. Student B. One. Three point one four times two, times two, times five, equals sixty-two point eight cubic meters. Two. Three point one four times point seven, times point seven, times thirty, equals. Forty-six point one five eight cubic meters. Three. Three point one four times point two five times point two five times twenty-two equals four point three one seven five cubic meters. Unit eight. Language spot. One. Offshore work is more hazardous than onshore work. Two. The platform is as big as a football field. Three. The top of the derrick is higher than a twenty-story building. Four. Drilling platforms are not as big as this. Unit eight. It's my job. Part one. What does an instrument technician do? Well, offshore platforms have a lot of instruments and instrument systems. Everything from simple gauges to electronic and computer systems. 
They're for measuring, recording and controlling variables. Variables like pressure, flow, temperature, level and so on. In my job, I install, maintain and repair these instruments. I inspect and test them regularly and adjust them if necessary. I test electrical circuits too. If there's a problem, I diagnose the problem and solve it. Part 2 What's it like living on a platform? Well, I only live here for two weeks at a time. We work two weeks and then we have two weeks leave. We work 12 hours a day for 14 days, so it's harder than other jobs. At the end of the day, you can rest, watch TV, watch films, go to the gym, read a book. The accommodation is OK. The rooms are small, but comfortable. There are two people per room. The food's good. Well, not as good as home food, but good. How does it compare with onshore work? For me, it's better than onshore work. The pay is good, and I get two weeks' leave every month. But it's not good for everybody. I mean, it's a long day, and you can't see your family and friends for two weeks. Unit 8. Listening. Hello, Dave. This is Martin again. Over. Dave, do you read? Over. This is Dave. Go ahead, Martin. Over. I'm in the control room. Are you in the process area? Over. Affirmative. Over. Can you see the gauge? Over. Negative. Is it P324? Over. Negative, Dave. The gauge is PD24. That's Papa Delta 24. Over. Stand by. Okay, I see it. Pressure is 5 bar. Over. Say again. Over. Pressure reads 5 bar. Over. The reading here is 3. Over. Do you say 3? Over. That's correct. There's something wrong, Dave. Can you find out what's wrong? Over. Affirmative. I'll do it now. Over. Great. Call me when you have some information. Over. Check. Over. Thanks, Dave. Out. Unit 8. Vocabulary. Exercise 1. A. Alpha. B. Bravo. C. Charlie. D. Delta. E. Echo. F. Foxtrot. G. Golf. H. Hotel. I. India. J. Juliet. K. Kilo. L. Lima. M. Mike. N. November. O. Oscar. P. 
Papa. Q. Quebec. R. Romeo. S. Sierra. T. Tango. U. Uniform. V. Victor. W. Whiskey. X. X-ray. Y. Yankee. Z or Z. Zulu. Exercise 3. 1. The employee's name is Pond. That's P for Papa, Oscar, November, Delta. 2. The part number is SF925. That's Sierra Foxtrot 925. 3. Go to building D. That's D for Delta. 4. The web address is cvo.com. That's charlievictoroscar.com. Unit 8. Pronunciation. 1. Instrument. 2. Inspect. 3. Platform. 4. Stand by. 5. Foxtrot. 6. Offshore. 7. Production. 8. Electric. 9. Install. 10. Equipment. 11. Volts. 12. Department. Unit 9. Vocabulary. Vaporize. Vaporization. Vapor. Liquify. Liquefaction. Liquid. Produce. Production. Product. Consume. Consumption. Store. Storage. Transport. Transportation. Pipe. Pipe. Unit 9. Number Talk. Exercise 2. 1. 1970. 2. 2002. 3. 1.5 trillion cubic meters. 4. 2 trillion cubic meters. Unit 9. Listening. Conversation 1. Were you at the meeting yesterday? No, I was too late. Was it interesting? Yes, the new operations manager was there. Was he at Ross Tanura Refinery before? Yes, he was. Conversation 2. Oh, we're busy. Are you? Why? There was a big problem this morning. What was the problem? 
Oh, there was a faulty level gauge on one of the main storage tanks. It's okay now. Conversation 3 Are you on your way to the warehouse? Yes, we are. The cable trays were ready last Friday. Oh, really? Yes. It was on the materials report. Unit 9. Speaking. Exercise 1. A. A cube. B. A cylinder. C. A sphere. Exercise 4. A. The tank is cylindrical. B. The unit is cuboid. C. The tank is spherical. D. The tower is vertical. E. The arm is horizontal. F. The machine is above ground. G. The men are underground. H. The pipe is at a 90 degree angle. I. The boat is on a truck. Unit 10. It's my job. My name is Ahmed Al Sabah. I work for the Kuwait Oil Company. I am a safety and environment officer. I work in Al Ahmadi in Kuwait. I work closely with our contractors. I help them to work safely and reduce environmental problems. I like my work. Every day, every week is different. Last week, I worked on a risk assessment with the operations and maintenance team and I visited some construction sites with my manager. We talked to some of the workers. We explained the importance of health, safety and the environment. It's a big responsibility. But everyone works together. We help each other. Unit 10, listening. Conversation 1. When did it happen? It happened last night. What did you do? We closed the main valve and made it safe. Was it a big spill? Less than a hundred litres. We cleaned it up right away. Conversation 2. There was a problem with noise. Yes, the compressor was very noisy. Did they build the new enclosure? Yes. The maintenance team finished it yesterday. Oh, did it work? Yes, it worked very well. It really reduced the noise. Conversation 3 When did it start leaking? It started leaking two days ago. Did you get the new gasket? No, I waited all day yesterday. The delivery didn't arrive. But David said it's coming today. Unit 10. Pronunciation. 1. Happened. 2. Closed. 3. Finished. 4. Worked. 5. Started. 6. Waited. Unit 10. Speaking. Control room. Pat speaking. Pat, this is Addy. I'm at the tank farm. There's an oil spill. Where is it exactly? Between tanks 12 and 14. Okay. Is anyone hurt? No. There are no injuries. So... What's the situation right now? The area's safe. The spill is around 
300 liters. It's contained in the bond. Okay, Adi. Well done. Go out to the road and I'll contact emergency services and get a maintenance team there right away. Unit 11. Listening. 1. Have you done the monthly maintenance on the compressor? Yes, I've checked the pressure and added oil. No problems. No problems. Two. They had a leaky water pipe at the gathering station. And Khalid stopped the leak. Oh, good. Three. What have you done about the lights in the car park? The switch was broken. We've taken out the old switch and put in a new one. Four. Are you busy today? We've got a team meeting at 8 o'clock. At 10 o'clock, we start work on Pipeline 29. What time do you finish? 9 o'clock tonight. Five. We need two men at well 36 tomorrow. They need welding gear. We also need two men here at the workshop. Okay. Aziz and Stas can go to that six. Iqbal should stay at the workshop. Iqbal and... Iqbal and Halim. Six. Have you finished the budget? Yes. Does it look okay? Yes. We've spent $20,000 on new workshop equipment this year. Next year, we can spend $25,000. Unit 11. Number talk. One millimeter. Two millimeters. One micron. Two microns. Point oh oh one millimeters. Point oh two five millimeters. Plus or minus. Unit 12. Vocabulary. Exercise 1. How's it going with that pump? Fine. We found the problem. What was wrong with it? The bearing was frozen. Have you replaced it? Not yet, but we've ordered a new one. It'll be here tomorrow, and we've replaced the hose. Why did you do that? It was split. Oh. Okay. So when will it be ready? We'll get the bearing tomorrow morning. We'll reinstall the pump tomorrow afternoon. Exercise 6. 1. The wires are corroded. I'll clean them. 2. The tank is damaged. There's a big dent in it. I don't think we can repair that. I'll write a report. Three. It's not working. What's wrong? It's frozen. The system is down. Okay. I'll restart the system. Four. Have you fixed it? No, it's jammed. I'll get the manual. Five. I can't remove the bolt. Why not? It's rusted. I'll get the angle grinder. Six. Ah, here's the problem. Look at the gear. It's worn. Oh, yes, I see. I'll replace it. Seven. See this belt? Yes. It's loose. So, it's noisy. I'll tighten it. Eight. What's the problem? It's this cap. It's leaking. Is it oil? Yes, it is. I'll check it. Unit 12. Pronunciation. Exercise 1. 1. Turn the cap. 2. 
Repair the rip. Three. Pull the tab. Exercise four. One. Belt. Two. Bolt. Three. Computer. Four. Copier. Five. Cap. Six. Broken. Seven. Repair. Eight. Problem. Unit twelve. Listening. Okay, Eric, what have you got? Right, the front office phoned. Their photocopier is jammed. Carl, will you look at that, please? Sure, I'll check it out this morning. I may need to call the manufacturer's technician. Fine. What else, Eric? There's a problem with the generator that the welding team is using. The engine is making a funny noise. Bill, can you take care of that? Sure, I'll do it this afternoon. Thanks, Bill. What are you doing this morning? I'm reinstalling that pump. Oh, have you finished the repairs? Yes, we finished yesterday. Great. What else, Eric? Let's see. It's time for the routine maintenance on the compressor. Okay, fine. Bill and Carl are busy, so I'll do that this morning myself. And I'll check yesterday evening's reports. Oh, and the new lights for the loading area arrived yesterday, Carl. Oh, good. I'll install those this afternoon. Okay, I'll give you a hand. Eric, what about you? I'll be at my desk all day. Unit thirteen, listening. Welcome to Oakton Refinery. This refinery turns crude oil into products like kerosene, petrol, and petrodiesel. Before we begin our tour today, I'll explain the organization of the refinery. One. This is the jetty. Tankers bring crude oil to the refinery. They unload the crude oil here. Two. The crude oil travels along these pipes into the tanks. Three. This area is called the tank farm. The crude oil is stored in these tanks until it is refined. Some of them are eighty meters high. There are over two hundred steps to the top. Four. This is the main refinery. This is where the oil is refined in the distillation towers. Five. These pipes take the products out of the refinery. Some of the pipes take kerosene to the airport. Six. The refinery uses river water for cooling the machinery. The used water is returned here to the salt marsh. It is often cleaner when it is returned than it was when it was taken from the river. Seven. The refinery is connected to the main road here. All of the workers come and go this way. Some of our products leave this way in tankers. Eight. The admin block is where the offices are. The people who work here manage the people and all of the machinery at the refinery. Nine. Oakton is the neighboring village. The refinery is hidden from the village by trees. Unit thirteen, number talk, one. Minus forty degrees Celsius. 
two. Zero degrees Celsius. Three. Forty-five degrees Celsius. Four. Thirty-seven degrees Celsius. Five. One hundred degrees Celsius. Unit fourteen. It's my job. My company supplies medics to the oil industry. My job is really three jobs. I'm a medic. I'm a safety officer, and I'm an environmental officer. As a medic, I look after the health of the workers. I do their physical examinations. When someone is sick or injured. I take care of them. If someone is badly injured or very sick, I arrange evacuation. As a safety officer, I do training. For example, when new employees arrive, I give them basic health and safety training. I also check equipment and plan for emergencies. If there is a fire, we follow a fire fighting plan. We also have an evacuation plan, in case we need to get everyone off the rig quickly. As an environment officer, I look after the working environment. If there are problems with noise or waste management, for example, I deal with them. I check noise levels, and I deal with any problems that workers have with the working environment. Unit fourteen. Listening. Situation one. We have a fire here. Where are you? And he's burned. His hands are burned. Where's the fire? We're in the workshop. We were welding. Okay. Is everyone safe? Yes. Is the fire burning now? No. We use the fire extinguisher. We put it out. Okay. Can he walk? Can the man with the burned hands walk? Yes. Okay. He can walk. The burn isn't very bad. Okay. Then bring him to me. Bring him to the clinic. Situation two. Are you okay? What happened? Is he okay? The toolbox fell off. I was working on the ladder. The tools fell. They hit his head. Is he unconscious? Yes. Look at his head. This is really serious. Okay, I'll, I'll call an ambulance. Is he breathing? Yes, he's breathing. Hello. Yes,、uh, we have a serious head injury here. We're at the Oakton Refinery in the tank area,、uh, tank twenty-seven. We need an ambulance. It's serious. Situation three. Okay, can you take the discharge hose off? Ah! <laughs> My arm! Quick, get under the shower. <sighs> We've got a chemical burn in the loading area. The bulk tanker loading area, caustic soda solution. Have you washed the burn? Yes, he's in the shower now. I think he's okay, but we're going to need to clean up. Unit fourteen, pronunciation, exercise two, one. Switch off. Two. Advice. Three. Evacuate. Four. Activate. Five. Vehicle. Six. Welding. Seven. 
Water. Eight. Very. Nine. Worst. Exercise three. One. Do you know where it went? Two. Did you get the wheel? Three. We had a problem with a wiper. Unit fourteen. Number talk. A fever is a temperature above thirty-eight point five degrees Celsius. A normal resting heart rate is sixty to one hundred beats per minute. A normal resting breathing rate is twelve to twenty breaths per minute. Eighty-five over fifty-five is a low blood pressure. A hundred and fifty over a hundred is a high blood pressure. Pain is measured on a scale of one to ten. One is very mild, and ten is the worst possible. Unit fifteen, listening, exercise two. My name is Toru Yamada. I'm a chemical engineer at Chiso Petrochemical Corporation. I work at our Goi factory near Tokyo. Our main products at Goi are polyethylene and polypropylene. Polyethylene is the most commonly used polymer in the world. Around the world, 80 million metric tons per year are produced. It is used as a packaging material. Polypropylene is also used in packaging, but is used in many other products too. Ropes, car parts, fabrics, and reusable containers are all made with polypropylene. The world produces nearly 50 million metric tons of polypropylene per year. Exercise five. Chiso's Moriyama plant manufactures composite fibers. It uses the polypropylene and polyethylene produced at the Goi plant. It specializes in the production of spun bond fabric. Spun bond composite is used to make floor carpets for cars, medical packaging, diapers, very strong envelopes, and many other products.